After a great deal of anticipation, this gift of life had finally arrived. It was June 18th, 2007, when my nephew, bouncing 10-pound, 5-ounce Connor, was born. He always brought so much joy to everyone around. The biggest smiles. That hearty little laugh. He was my cuddly teddy bear. At the age of three months, his father had a massive heart attack, and our bundle of joy came to live with us. After spending months with us, a strong bond was nurtured between my little man and I. Although always happy, at the age of 21 months, Connor began to exhibit many unusual symptoms, which raised a great deal of concern. Within a week, we began to notice bruising, waking up with a black eye, petechiae, eye, and a desire to fall asleep anywhere. We knew that something was wrong. The following Friday, we then decided to take him to emerge. The doctor just brushed it off, sending him home, telling us it was just the virus. The next Tuesday, he was taken to his family doctor, who then requested blood work. Not even a day later, after putting three-week-old Cole, 21-month-old Connor, and three-year-old Cameron to bed, my sister got a phone call that was about to change her life forever. On March 25, 2009, Connor was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. 85% of his bone marrow was consumed with these blasts. I remember this day as if it were yesterday. It was a nightmare. Even then, the reality was not realized. There is no way that anyone could ever prepare for something like this. This overwhelming worry and fear consumed me. I felt like his days were numbered. This could be the end. Following the news, we all headed down to the kids to commence the next part of this journey, the treatment. He was to undergo intensive chemotherapy for 12 months and to undergo another two and a half years of maintenance chemo following that. This road created many challenges. When I would see Connor, I was overtaken by grief. Such an innocent baby suffering. Even his eyes revealed the pain that he was enduring. As his hair fell out in handfuls day by day, the realization of what these drugs were doing became evident. He would stare at us without recognition and try to walk, but just to fall over. These different chemos had many different side effects. But one thing's for sure, his relentless desire and zest for life never wavered. We were able to celebrate a huge milestone with him, Connor's third birthday. But while undergoing his maintenance chemo on September 13th, 2010, we received a phone call of more devastating news. Connor had relapsed, and the blasts were now in his spinal fluid. Right away, they started high-dose chemo, and because of him relapsing well on treatment, a bone marrow transplant would be the best option. We soon found out that Cameron was an unusual 10 out of 10 match. After preparing for the transplant with high-dose chemo and radiation, the big day had finally come. We were unable to see Connor following the transplant until he had engrafted. Several phone calls were received, informing us that his health was deteriorating to the point where he was not able to breathe on his own. We were not sure if he would make it. He was then placed in the intensive care unit, where I was then able to see him. From then on, every day we would see a slight improvement, even if it was just a half smile or holding my hand. Now after making a complete turnaround by the end of last week, he is back in his room and hopefully on the road to recovery. Connor gave us the inspiration to fight, to never give up. This little trooper is my hero. Whenever I feel like giving up, I look back on Connor and his zest for life through all these challenges he overcame. Trials and tribulations of life are what makes us the people that we are. At the end of the tunnel, there is light.